Good afternoon. We're back at it. We're doing section 2.5. This is the last section. Since nobody's here today, we're going to do it on video. You can watch the video at home. This is another test for zeros of polynomials. And basically, you should read this section because this is what's going on. It says, you know that an nth degree of polynomial function can have at most n real zeros. In other words, if it's fifth degree, it could have at most five zeros. That means they could be less than or equal to five. Of course, many nth degree polynomials do not have that many real zeros. For example, f of x is x squared plus one has no real zeros. And f of x equals x cubed plus 1 has one real zero. The following theorem called Descartes' rule of signs sheds the light on the number of real zeros of a polynomial. So here comes Descartes' rule of signs. You have a polynomial with real coefficients. That means they're all real number coefficients. No imaginaries in there. The number of positive real zeros of f is either equal to the number of variations in the sine of f of x or less that number by an even integer. Now, the even integer, I tell students, is always 2. You're always subtracting 2. So if you don't know what that means, that's what they're doing. The number of negative real zeros of f is either equal to the number of variations in the sine of f of negative x or is less than that number by even integer. What is that even integer? It's 2. What does a variation in sine mean? Variation in sine means two consecutive coefficients have opposite signs. So, when using Descartes' rule of signs, a 0 multiplus plus ck should be counted as k0. For example, you take x cubed minus 3x plus 2. What you do is you look here, you see there's a variation right here, because it's going from positive to negative, and then one right there, negative to positive. So what I do is a PNI chart. What is a PNI chart? Positive, negative, imaginary. And I'll show you how this works. When I came over here, I have two variations in sign. That's just looking at the function. You plug in an x, see it's positive, that's a positive number. So you're doing f of positive x here. That's what it gives you right there. There's two variations in sign for positive number. But the rule says, or is less than that by an even integer. What's 2 minus 2? So you get two or zero positive roots there. Now you have to do the negative. So that means you have to do f of negative x. So I'm going to write it in the book. I'll come over here. f of negative x. I put a negative into the cube. I get negative x cubed. I put a negative for the x there, minus 3 times negative x, and it says plus 2. This is just negative x cubed plus 3x plus 2. Now we're doing negative variation. Here it goes from negative to positive. There's one variation in sign. So that's 1. Got that? You cannot subtract 2 from that. You can never have a negative number in this chart. So don't ever put a negative number in the chart. So if you try 1 minus 2, you're going to get negative 1. You can't do that. Don't do it. It's a third degree equation, so this has to equal 3. So 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 0. That means there would be 0 imaginary roots. 2 positive, 1 negative, or no imaginary. Or, we have one negative root, because 
the negative is 1, you just bring it down as 1. And imaginary roots come in pairs, so there's 2 here. What's 1 plus 2? 3. So what they're telling you there is, there's two positive, one negative roots there, or there's one negative and two imaginary. So if you were solving this equation, you would test negative first. Why? Because we know there's a negative root. See, with this rule here, you could have two or no positive roots. So if you just started dividing by positive numbers there, when you did the rational root theorem, you could be wasting your time. That's all Descartes' rule of sign allows you to do. It allows you to eliminate possibilities. So when, if I was doing this, I would divide by negative 1 and negative 2, because the factors of x cubed are 1, the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. So I'd start dividing by negatives to find the roots. So let's look at the example that they do in the book. Without looking at the answer, let's just show you how this works now. You have a function f of x equals 3x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 4. We want to do a PNI chart. So real quick, I do P and I. I just draw this and do a couple of lines. Can you make more? Are you going to use them all? I don't know. So I do the problem. Now, the positive x is already positive, so all you do is look at it for the positive. You just are going, this is negative to positive. There's one variation. Negative to positive, there's another variation. There's positive to negative, there's another variation. How many variations there? How many possible roots there? One, two, Three. Three positive. Or is less than that by an even integer. What's three minus two? So you get three or one there. Now we have to do f of negative x. f of negative x. That's three times negative x to the third power. Minus five times negative x squared. Plus six times negative x minus 4. If I work this out, it's negative 3x cubed. That's x squared, right? So it stays as minus 5x squared, because the negative squared is positive, times negative is negative. That's going to be minus 6x minus 4. There's no change there, negative to negative, negative to negative, negative to negative. There are zero negative roots here. This has to equal 3, because it's third degree. So you have to set that equal to 3. 3 plus 0 plus 1 equals 3. That has to be 0. The negative root here is 0. There are no negative roots. 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 3. 2. That's your PNI chart. So in this problem, you would not divide by a negative first. Why? Because it says zero negative roots. You'd start with the positive numbers. That's why you, when you use the rational root theorem, you should know Descartes' rule of signs. It makes life a lot easier. Let's do the last example now. We want to do a P and I chart. So I do P and I. What's P and I? It's positive, negative, imaginary. I don't know what it's going to look like, so I just sketch a bunch of lines, like so. Then I go and look at the positive sign changes. We're going from negative to positive, there's one. Positive to negative, there's one. Negative to positive is what? How many you got? What's three minus two? Now, I cannot subtract any more because I'll be in negative territory and the chart has no negative numbers in it. Yes, sir? How do you know that it's 3 minus Because that's a good question, and I'll point it out to you when you read the book here. It says, or is less than that by an even integer. What's the even integer? 2. 
So that's why I try to tell kids, you've got to read the book. It's all, it's a manual. It gets ugly. If you're not reading that, it gets crazy. You have to know what it means. So now we're going to do f of negative x equals, we're going to take negative 2 times negative x to the third power, plus 5 times negative x squared, minus negative x, then plus 8. That's negative cubed is negative. That's going to turn into 2x cubed. Because that's a negative times a negative is positive. That's plus 5x squared. And I see negative and negative. What's that? And I see positive 8. How many sign changes here? How many sign changes there? Is there any positive to negatives there? There's zero. We know it's a third degree polynomial. If you look at the leading coefficient, the highest exponent there is three. So this has to equal three. Three plus zero plus what make three? Zero. Negative is zero here. So there is no negative roots. Imaginary roots come in pairs. That has to be an even number always. So it's two. Because one plus two makes three. That's called Descartes' rule of signs. Now you can use that all the time whenever you do a math problem. So if you were doing like problem number one or three there, that's a fourth degree equation. You could do a PNI chart there. Let's just do one for the heck of it so we can make sure we know what we're doing. This would be a PNI chart for number three here. So I'm going to do PNI. Again, PNI stands for positive, negative, and imaginary. They can be really big. I don't know what this is going to look like. How many sign changes there? I see positive to negative is 1. Negative to positive is 2. And then positive to negative is 3. I see 3 sign changes. See that? What's 3 minus 2? 1. Now we have to do the negative. So I'll come over here and do f at negative x. 2 times negative x to the 4th power. Minus 9 times negative x to the 3rd power. Minus 18 times negative x squared. Plus 71 times negative x. And then it says minus 30. If I work this out, that's 2x to the 4th. Negative to even power is positive. This is a negative to odd power. Is negative times negative is positive 9x squared cubed. Sorry, 9x cubed. Negative x squared is positive, but then it's minus 18x squared. That's a positive times a negative is negative. This is a positive, this is going to be negative 71x, because it's positive times negative, and minus 30. How many sign changes there? I see 1. Positive to negative. There's no there, none there. So I see 3 and 1. These have to equal 4 now. This would be 0. 3 plus 1 plus 0 is 4. The negative is always going to be 1 there. Imaginary roots come in conjugate pairs, so this has to be 2. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. Got that? So it tells you there's definitely a negative root there, but there could be 3 positives, or two of them could be imaginary. One would be positive. So Descartes' rule of signs just tells you what kind of roots are going to be possibilities. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll stop it. And uh, I think this is stopped.